Ever since its discovery in 1930, Pluto has always considered something of an oddball planet compared to the others. For one, its orbit is inclined by about 17 degrees compared to the other planets in our solar system. Not only is Pluto's orbit inclined, but its orbit intersects Neptune's. In fact, from 1979 to 1999, Pluto was closer to the Sun than Neptune was. When its moon Charon was discovered in 1978, it became clear that Pluto had another unique characteristic. Rather than remaining relatively stationary while Charon orbits, Pluto and Charon orbit a common center of gravity, called a barycenter, located outside of Pluto's surface. In recent years, new observations showed that Pluto was simply one of over 70,000 large objects, each more than 100 kilometers across, scattered in a vast outer region known as the Kuiper Belt. As telescopes grew larger and more powerful, astronomers began discovering larger and larger bodies in the Kuiper Belt. In 2003, Haumea was discovered, measuring only a little smaller than Pluto. It even had two moons of its own. In 2005, another object designated Makemake was discovered to be only a little smaller than Pluto. Astronomers realized that it was only a matter of time before an object larger than Pluto would be discovered in the Kuiper Belt. Sure enough, in 2005, astronomer Mike Brown dropped the bombshell. Brown and his team announced the discovery of Eris, an object that orbited farther and was a little bit larger and more massive than Pluto itself. Meanwhile, Pluto is continuing to turn up surprises of its own. In 2005, two new moons, Nix and Hydra, were discovered. Pluto was seeming less like a traditional planet and more like a collection of objects, all orbiting the same center of gravity. All of these discoveries led astronomers to question the very definition of a planet. And so, in 2006, at the 26th General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union, a vote was taken to officially define a planet as an object that meets the following criteria. First, it needs to be in orbit around the Sun. Obviously, Pluto meets this criteria. Second, it needs to have enough gravitational pull to bring itself into a spherical shape. Granted, no planet is perfectly spherical, but compared to, say, a lumpy asteroid, Pluto fits that criteria as well. Third, it needs to have cleared the neighborhood of its orbit. And this is where Pluto has a problem. You see, as the planets formed, they became the dominant object in their orbit around the Sun. Over billions of years, any other objects in the same orbit either collided with and became part of the planet, or were simply ejected out of the planet's orbit entirely. For example, Earth is 1.7 million times the mass of any other object in its orbit. But Pluto is hardly alone in its orbit around the Sun. It's only just one of 70,000 large objects in the Kuiper Belt, and accounts for less than 1% of the total mass of the debris in its orbit. And so Pluto, Eris, Makemake, and Haumea, along with Ceres in the asteroid belt, were redesignated as dwarf planets since they meet the first two criteria. Fortunately, Pluto is hardly forgotten. The New Horizons spacecraft, launched in 2006, will fly past Pluto in 2015, giving humanity its first ever direct glimpse at this distant world. Following its flyby, New Horizons will press on to explore the outer Kuiper belt and help us better understand this unexplored region of our solar system. Though it is no longer considered a traditional planet, Pluto has opened a new chapter in our understanding of our solar system, and now, 70 years after its discovery, we are just beginning to understand it.